we're going to be looking at drawing marine mammals. And this is, 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 is really fun because um, there's, there's, there are several things that um, are, make this, this so cool. Some marine mammals, you, you, you don't get to see them very often. And when you see, you only see part of them, right? Others are out and about and are, are incredibly cooperative. And they're beautiful. And some are huge and crazy and fun. And so we're going to be looking at drawing um, some of the cooperative ones and some of the not very cooperative ones um, and getting a sense of how you can draw what you actually can see. Um, but to, to start, we're going to start with some um, seals and sea lions. And um, in order to do that, what we really want to do is take a look at drawing the snossage, right? Um, we're going to take a look at, at, drawing, at drawing blobbies. Um, this is going to be a way of visualizing sort of three-dimensional, smooth, rounded um, shapes. And you're going to find that this work in sort of drawing the blobby is going to pay huge dividends in handling all of these um, seals. So before I get into any slides and things, I just want to bring you over, I'm going to uh, use the document camera and um, bring you over to the, um, I'm going to bring you over to the, um, uh, uh, we're, we're going to take a look at just sort of how to make your own blobbies. And this is going to be a lot of fun. And by the way, making blobbies is a great exercise to do anytime you're like, you're sitting around and you're like, there's, there's, I mean, there is no phenomena around here that I could really, um, draw and you're thinking like you know how what, what should I do make some blobbies and it's going to help it just trains your brain to visualize things in three dimensions so you're going to like you're going to like you some blobbies here we go uh, um, camera oh more oh I'm going to actually need to draw here more could you uh could you scoot over a little bit thanks buddy um all right so what I'm going to do is I am going to to draw some some shapes, and they're going to start off kind of simple. Um, I'm making a kind of rounded form here, sort of jelly bean. So I sort of have a little jelly bean form here, All right? And it looks like I probably want to draw a little bit darker. I'm going to zoom down a little bit here. All right, there's my jelly bean. All right, now what we're going to do is normally what happens is our brains think of a shape like this as an outline. But when you're doing the blobby, what you're doing is you're training yourself to think as of this as a three-dimensional object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap some cross contour lines around it. Imagine if there was a line that was going around it, it would curl up around like that. This is the end that is facing towards you, All right? So here is a little contour line around this end. I'm making it closer to this side than to this side. Um, here's another little contour line. You can think of these as sort of a circle that is going all the way around, but you only get to see this part here. So I'll sometimes, you know, visualize that circle going around and then there it is. And, and here is So there's, there's my, my, my blobby number one. Um, and this one, I'm going to kind of make it kind of pinch down here a little bit, kind of pinch up there, just to give it a little bit more of an interesting shape. Right. So this, the big thing here is that I'm, I'm thinking about this as, as a three-dimensional form. There's a line, say, that wrapped around it here. What would that do? Well, it would kind of tuck in here. It would come around here, coming around here, and like that. So you want to start thinking about how can you wrap 
different contour lines around your blobby. So next to this blobby, I'm going to make another one. All right, this one is going to come like this, and it's gonna kind of start pinching on itself, all right? Right up in here, it's gonna be a little bit of a fold, and there we are. You can really make the outline do anything you want. Places where I kind of turn it off and I'll sort of put in a few of these little blobby wrinkles. All right, so let's, let's put some, some contour lines on this. So with this part here, if I want to make this little stub here kind of turning back towards you, all right, that means that the end of it, remember that the circle right here in the end, if it's, you're looking at a side view, you'd have this part coming down and the contour might be doing something like that. But if it's turning back towards me, then I'm gonna again be seeing a little bit of this end that is facing towards me. So there's a little contour line, the middle of this thing being there. Let's put Often it's a good idea to, you know, just imagine what that contour line is doing all the way around and then you draw it on the side that's facing you. You're going to discover that these sort of lines are gold for um, for for drawing uh, seals and things that are you want it to feel three-dimensional. I want this part here to feel like it's it's turning away from me. So I'm going to make this arch like that. And here's another one in here. This is going to arch like that. So in these places, as the line comes towards the edge, see how it's sort of pinching into there? That's because you're seeing that part of that part of the circle um, let's just put one more back here um, maybe this is oh thank you Mia all right I'm gonna make This one is going to, you could really just sort of make any little shape you want and then you have to turn it into a three dimensional form. So on this one, um, it's, it's gonna have a little tube that is sticking around in front of it. Um, and that tube, I want it turning back away from us. So this one I had coming towards us, this one is gonna be away from us. So that means I'm going to make this line kind of like that. All right. And then here is my next oval. And notice that this was a big wide oval. This is going to be eventually, I mean, this is going to be turning around. So this next oval is going to be skinnier. And then this next one is going to be really skinny like that. And so almost straight. And as I'm coming over here, it's now flipping back the other way. See how this was curving this way. Now as we're kind of coming around this direction, we are Um, and what do I want this to do? Um, 
I want this to be leaning towards me. So I'm gonna put the, mi the middle of it right here, a little oval around that. All right, now an oval on that. So notice that this next oval in the back, it's kind of crudding across there, but in the front, it's here. Now it's gonna, And then off of this little point here, I can draw other contours. This is gonna come down here. And then there's this little bump here. So I'm gonna kind of bump out over that. And it's gonna wrap around there. Here's another little line coming across. It's coming down here. So what I'm doing is just thinking of some, some imaginary form, but I'm training myself to think of it as, as a, as a three-dimensional thing. If I do this with the seals that I draw, they're going to have a really different kind of form and structure to them. And this is a, this is a big deal. Um, if I just have a little outline, but in my head, it's not a three-dimensional form, I'm really not gonna have as much of a, an ability to, to, to it, it will feel flat. If I'm, if I'm visualizing it as a flat thing, it will feel flat to me. Just putting a little bit of graphite in, scribbling on this side and over here that I can take my smudger Yeah, so anything I can do that's going to help me just start to think of these. As three dimensional shapes. is going to help. So those are some blobbies and Again, you can make any, any kind of crazy shape you want and turn it into a blobby. You basically make yourself a shape, then you decide like, you know, this point I'm gonna make pointing towards me. You know, how am I gonna wrap contour lines around that? You know, um, this one here, um, you know, how am I going to, you know, what part do I want to have coming, leaning towards me, leaning away from me? And then you drop in your contour lines. It's a wonderful visualization tool. And um, you, can, you can play with this as, as, as much as you want. Now that we've got this idea under our belt, we're going to go over and take a look at, at some seals. Um, if you've ever seen a harbor seal, they basically look like a sausage. Um, and so hey, we've just drawn a harbor seal. Um, but uh, we're going to... Um, also look at these things from a, a scientific point of view, kind of understand the anatomy that's there. And you'll see that in that blobby form, you can actually get a lot of, of, of subtlety and, and nuance. And then you have a few places where you pop in nose and eyes and those sorts of things, and all of a sudden it's looking back at you. I'm going to go over to a, uh, let's see, here we go. Um, uh, some slide share here and we are um, we're going to take a look at how we can 
um, let's let's start with uh, some seals and sea lions. All right. So again, when you first look at them, you're going to go like, "Oh dear, it's it's blobby, right?" Um, but if we have a, an anatomical understanding of the structure underneath this beautiful seal skin, then you are, you are in a, a, a much better place. Okay. With this little sea lion, it doesn't look so blobby. Sea lions have a much more sort of visible, articulated bodies. Um, when we look at them, you can see, oh, you have a shoulder blade in here that goes to a, a forearm, an, an upper arm that goes to a forearm to your hand. So you're seeing actually this is a this is a hand, this is its forearm, its upper arm goes like this up to its shoulder blade here. Um, in here, you have hip bones that go to um, uh, knees, that go to heels, that go to a foot. Um, all that fits in this area, those, those upper things all covered and wrapped around with skin. But underneath that skin, there is a skeleton. There is a skeleton. And you look at it, something like this, and it looks like you know a, a cool critter holding its front feet backwards. But know that underneath that, that skin is something very similar to, um, to, to critters that you're familiar with. So we have a skull that attacks, attaches to a flexible neck. There is a trunk. Um, we have our very short bones in our hind legs, um, medium short in our forelimbs, but the hands and the feet are really, really, really large. So when they're swimming through the water, right, you kind of look at this view and you'll be glad you are not a fish. This is, this is, this is the, uh, this is a, a little nightmare vision for a perch. Um, this is a, 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 you know, coming at you, sea lion skeleton. It's a shoulder blade up there, a, um, forearm here, uh, sorry, an upper arm here, forearm. So the upper arm, that's your humerus, forearm, that's your radius and ulna. And then look at that great big hand, great big hand. So when we look at them like this, what we want to be doing is visualizing, oh, okay, so here is my forearm, this is my hand, um, tucked, wrapped up inside the body here, that's where sort of embedded in the body is going to be my upper arm. So unlike a human being where you're seeing this section, this section, and then the hand, um, if, I were, um, if, if I were a sea lion, I would have my flipper being essentially this part of my body exposed, right? So my, my hand, and my, 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 my forearm. Um, on the, the, the leg, you have, this is, this is its foot, right? So the foot bones are all through there. And, um, but the, the legs are, are hidden from your view more inside the body. Take a look at this critter, a little a hungry rescue pup um, from our good friends at the Marine Mammal Center. Um, and let's take a look at, can you, can you spot its hand? Can you spot its forearm? So if so, you are well ahead of the game. Notice that interesting articulation that change in angle where you kind of come up the hand, you get to the form. There's a really different thing going on in there. Um, so this part of the, the, the body, you want to think of this flipper, not just as this, this, this fleshy thing sticking out, but 
as forearm coming down to the hand, all right? And you'll, you, can, you can see it uh, often, the, the leg will come down, there'll be an, a change in angle. And so it can, it can articulate that hand in all sorts of different directions. If you really look for that angle on that front um, leg, your drawings will have a much more sort of sense of anatomical understanding of what is underneath the hood. All right. When we see these critters zooming around underwater, this kind of awkward shape gives way to just an incredibly graceful, aerodynamic, moving critter. All right. um, it's shaped like a torpedo for floating through the water with grace and with speed. On land, it is pretty awkward. Not nearly as awkward as a harbor seal, which we'll get to in just a moment, but these guys are not made um, for really doing um, much on land. This, this is the environment where they really excel. So um, here we have drawings of the skin underneath the hood, and see if you can just, on your piece of paper, do a quick little study blocking in what you feel are the major kind of essential elements of this skeleton that you think are going to be important for you to be aware of as an artist. Simplify the parts that are going to be irrelevant to you and um, include the things that you think are going to be um, you know, parts of the skeleton that make a real difference. It's a harbor seal on the right. It is a sea lion on the left. We're gonna do this for about one minute. You don't have to do them both. Do whichever is the coolest to you. As you do this, also just kind of keep in mind the homologies, um, that is the, the, the shared structures that we have with these critters. So you see shoulder blade, you see humerus, you see radius and ulna, femur, tibia, fibula on the back leg, and foot. When we see that body on the outside, it, it can feel just like jello. But in our heads, if we kind of keep a clear understanding of that there actually is, there is a, there is a skeleton underneath this thing, that will start to inform the angles that we uh, put on as we start to um, stretch skin over this framework. We're going to take about 30 more seconds. Not time to do a finished portrait of any one of these things. But you'll be able to get down the anatomy that you are feeling right now. I want to be just sort of aware of these major features. Now, let's take a look at this. Look at this thing and see if you can project in your brain into this critter some of that skeleton. Some of that skeleton. What are you seeing? So, Underneath that skin, there are. You draw the, the, the bones under that. Mm -hmm. right. right now, I'm trying to do that. So, um, if you 
look at the the uh, the the small uh, inset of of uh, of of the the presenter view. You'll see my piece of paper there. Uh, Melinda, could you tell people how to handle their split screen? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll just do it by voice. That might be easier. So those of you who are on a um, device, you'll just need to swipe between the sea lion um, image and Jack's um, sketch pad. And those of you who are on a computer, you can go to the top of your screen and it'll say view options. There should be a little box with a little arrow that you can um, tip. And when you click that arrow, it'll give you a whole list of options and click side by side mode. And if you do that, you should see um, the sketchbook um, page and the C-line side by side. And then what you'll do is take your mouse and just move it between those two pictures and you should see a gray line that appears, vertical gray line. And if you drag, click and drag it, you'll notice that you can change the size of the C-line and size of the sketchbook back and forth. And so you can kind of slide it to whichever one you want to see larger at any moment. Um, and I'm going to um, put in the typed instructions into the chat box in case you're still not not certain. Thank you very much, Melinda. Sure. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, just make a um, thinking about the, a skeleton underneath this. I'm going to make a show you how I might make kind of a quick sketch of something like this. What I sometimes will do is put in a little ball as an, an anchor for a head. And then I look at the shape of the air down behind its back here. Mm -hmm. See that? Notice when I'm looking at the shape of the air, this contour becomes a lot more apparent to me. If I'm looking at the seal, I can get so, a sea lion, I get so distracted by the sea lion that it's hard for me to see, oh, this kind of comes down in a curve, then there's a flat place, another curve, flat place, change, flat, down, back in. So what I will do is there's a curve down to a flat place down to, um, I'm going to zoom back here. Um, so curve there, there, and then it's going to run off the side of my paper. All right. Um, so I like looking at the shape of the air next to things rather than the thing itself. And what I'm looking for are places where there are changes in angles, these little inflection points. And that helps me be able to carve this shape. And I'm going to have a, in the darkness, it's hard to see where the front edge of that flipper is coming in, or the back edge of it, I should say. Um, and then I want to think of this like a blobby. I'm thinking that my eye line, the height of my eye line is actually, before I do that, let me just take one look at it. Notice that mine is a little bit skinny necked, right? I was so, I was focusing on this shape here and focusing on this shape here, but I wasn't focusing on the distance between those. So because mine is a little bit skinny necked, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to thicken it out before I get too far along on my drawing. There, that's better. So making a mistake isn't a problem as long as I'm willing to notice that I made a mistake. And when I do that, um, I can get in there and I can correct those. Um, that sometimes when you put a mark, even a bold, especially a bold mark down on a piece of paper, you don't want to, you don't want to change your mind because you're committed to this thing. I'm thinking that the photographer's eye line is probably somewhere around here, which means that as you're kind of coming down in here, my blobby lines are gonna be like that. And notice that I'm not making this 
perfectly rounded here, a little bit more of a bend in there because it's thinking of more of a flat chest here. Neck will be a little bit rounder. And So what I'm doing is just getting myself to, to think of this as, as a big three-dimensional, a three-dimensional object. That's gonna be really, really powerful for making my, uh, giving my drawing a sense of, 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 of volume. I'm going to move on from this critter and look at another. So when we come back here, we're now thinking of underneath the, the skin of that critter, there is there are, there, there are bones, and so what we can do then is put those, the skin around our bones. So whichever one you drew, um, if you drew in some uh, a kind of a quick skeleton drawing, see if you can just wrap some skin over that. Notice that on the neck, the spine, if you feel on the back of your neck, on the back of your neck, you can actually feel your neck bones, right? If you are, um, and so the, 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 the spine runs up the top edge, not by the bottom. It doesn't go through the middle of the meat of the neck. In the front of that, that's where the esophagus and the trachea would be coming down. So give yourself a little bit of uh, of, of, of seal meat around your skeleton. This, we'll see more of this if, now here is, here's our little harbor seal. Now, at first you're thinking snossage, right? But also think of this as in your head, put a skull inside that head, a neck going down where the middle of that trunk is. We'll just pop back here for a second. So you're getting to a place where the, where the leg comes in, that's where the ribs are also gonna be. So there's gonna be rib cage and stuff down here. You're gonna have hips right down here flexible spine in between those two, little legs going down to the large feet. Now let's think of this as a blobby. And what I want you to do is to visualize contour lines wrapping around this form here. Visualize contour lines wrapping around this form. So you're thinking of this as a, as a three-dimensional as a three-dimensional thing. I'm gonna go back over to my piece of paper here and make a, um, and make a little sketch. So I'm, I often will start with a kind of an anchor Anchor of a ball of the head. Right. Then I love looking at negative shapes. So there's just an angle that I see that comes down like this, and then you're onto the body. The body is going to be roughly in this area here. 
right? Um, but coming down here, there's gonna be a slight little bump where you have that limb. Or with an angle coming down here to where you meet the rock. So from here on this side of the head, it's coming down and then slightly back in. At this point, just like I did, I'm now looking at proportions. Did I make any parts too thick, too thin? My overall body in here is a little bit too short. All right, see it's interesting. You will tend to make things like heads and flippers too big and things like body where there's no action going on, like there's not a lot of stuff happening here in the body. And so your body goes, your brain goes, oh, that's boring. So make that part shorter. So parts of a drawing that are not as exciting to you, you will tend to, you will tend to make those a little bit too small. And that's, so I didn't do this on purpose to make a kind of teachable moment. This really happened. So really this guy's body is going to be something like this. And coming down to a rock point here, right? That's, those are the proportions of this thing a little bit better. But just, isn't that interesting? So I made a mistake in my drawing that, um, you know, it's, that is, it's a very common, common one to do. Or those proportions are things that kind of get us all the time. Um, and a lot of people don't notice that there's something wrong with their portions, their proportions until they finish their drawing. They go like, something just looks off. Something looks off. And at that point, there's nothing that you can do about it. Right. So now I'm going to um, think of this little snossage shape as a blobby. This part here, I'm going to put a line through the head, line kind of wrapping around here. See those wrinkles? Those wrinkles are showing you where a kind of ring on your blobby goes. Those wrinkles right there in the neck. Those are those are 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 are, are contour lines for my blobby. And often it's really nice to think of those as three-dimensional forms. And I'll put that little paw on the paw goes on. So I'm taking a look at this. Where is that? I'm looking at the distance from here to here, roughly in here. Distance from, is there enough belly there? Or maybe this comes back here a little bit. If it was roughly in there, how would that feel? Is that getting, no, it's a little bit cramped there. But it feels like, oh, check this out. You know what? See, look at this. I'm now putting in where this little hand goes, a little flipper. And if I put it in here, it's too close to here, but it looks pretty good in here. If I put it down here, then it's looking better in this distance, but too close to here. My body still isn't long enough. That's cool. All right. So, um, uh, so I'm going to, so at this point, I could kind of keep drawing here, but I'm running out of paper. So I'm just going to notice that and make a note body is longer. All right. 
Um, that's another way. Anytime a drawing isn't work for working for you, if you can figure out why, even if you can't fix it, um, I'll make a note in my journal because then I just have more information. Harbor seals have really prominent claws. Not so much on sea lions. We'll get into details of drawing the face pretty soon. Don't worry, we're not going to have these sort of faceless harbor seals. But right now, we're just thinking about seals and sea lions as there actually is a skeleton under there, and they are three-dimensional forms. That way, you're not just having an outline. Oh, look, that's my seal. All right? And no. All right? We want to think of it as a three-dimensional three shape. Here's a new, same species, similar pose, but different. All right. Take a look at this. Visualize the skeleton inside. Now visualize contour lines around it. Notice that you're seeing right here with some wrinkles in the body. Those are contour lines you're definitely going to want to follow. All right. Notice how these little lines across the belly curve. Right, those are helping you sculpt your blobby. This little one is going to be here for about two minutes. All right. Let's see if we can, on our um, own pages, block that, block that in. Don't worry about watching me. Try it yourself. I like to put in the head first. Now, this time I'm, to, I'm gonna pay more attention to my proportions. Now I'm really thinking, like, what are the proportions? I wanna make mine longer. I added a whole, almost a whole head length to my body. Something that's wonderful about drawing marine mammals is that um, it really is, it, you can practice practically thinking about these things as, as, as rounded forms. This practice will then spill over into all the other drawings that you do. You'll start to see more three-dimensionality coming into the other drawings and sketches that you do.
If we think about these things moving, there are certain points on the skeleton where they are able to move more than other places. So less in the middle of the trunk. Um, major points of inflection are where the neck leaves the head and where the neck inserts into the trunk. Also where the, uh, the, the, the lumbar vertebrae down on the sort of far end of the, the the spinal column between the rib cage, which is pretty long, isn't it? And the hips there. So you can get a lot of flexibility and motion in at, at that point. And because of that little angle down at the end, very often you'll see the, the, the critter's body coming down and then you'll, you'll find it turns down really steeply, really steeply down at the tip, at the back end of the body. So you'll expect this thing to kind of come on down and then there's angle change, big angle change. Oh, that's just so cool, isn't it? All right. So um, back to quick gesture sketching. What I want you to do is um, don't look down at your paper. Let's just, on your piece of paper, um, draw this without looking at it. Look at those, sort of see what you get, all right? Amelia just caught me looking at my paper. <laughs> right. so let's try a slower contour drawing. Just put your pencil down, feel, and just be an ant walking around the edges of this thing. And without the temptation of looking up, every time you notice there is a change in angle, that is a different decision. Each one of those angle changes is a decision point for you. And what you want to do is to just sort of flow along with those decisions. Yours may not look like, um, right? So it, you will often get something that is, is surprising and strange to you, right? The, um, my nose didn't meet up with my head, but there are places there are places in this where you see where you, you really are kind of getting some of those angle changes, and there'll be parts of it that really do work. Right? On the same page with that, now try just blocking in some of the sort of a scribble drawing, blocking in uh, the shape, sort of masses of things. Oh yeah, for this, I, you can look at your paper. And then tweak that by looking at negative shapes around it. Very often when I'm sketching something, my brain is bouncing back and forth between looking at the masses, that's the sort of inner scribbled shapes, and the negative shapes, the lines around the edges of these things. And if you get your brain to play in both of those camps, you'll get results that work a lot better. The way you're I sees when you're looking at the edges. Could you turn that off? Um, the, just push the button. Um, um, the way your eye sees when you are looking at masses is different than the way your eye sees when you're looking at edges. So what you want to do is 
intentionally force your brain to kind of do both of those things. So here is a skeleton of a sea otter. And you see that they basically got a, a, a similar structure, smaller shoulder blade, right? That's your shoulder blade right in there. Smaller shoulder blade. And um, they go cruising around on their backs. You put some fur in with it. Most of the otter is below the surface. <laughs> But you're having a neck that comes up and a little skull that then tucks back in. So that is what is happening underneath the hood on the otter. It's very much like you lying on your back, just with short, cute legs. And here is an otter above the surface. For this, what you want to do um, I'm gonna say, what I'm going to suggest you do is I'm going to block this in and what you're going to see is I'm not just going to be drawing what is above the surface, but I'm going to get just an indication of some of the stuff that is happening below the surface. So as I might go about drawing an otter like this, um, I have a body and a little otter head, all right? Um, my little otter head, I am kind of blocking up in here. My otter paws, my otter tummy, and that's going down to some otter feet back here that are kind of flopped up on top of each other. And then, but what I want to do is, you notice that I, I've got all this stuff down here. I, I do that because I want to be thinking of this thing still as, as, as a rounded form. And then what I can do is take my water's edge and kind of trim it along. Need a less otter tummy in there. I'll put in my sort of the, the edge of the water, but my brain has already been thinking that there's stuff underneath here so that my otter can, there will be sort of, there'll be a lot more structure and kind of understanding in what I've, um, what I otter be drawing. Um, So as I was drawing, so I, I, I didn't just kind of go like, I have this shape above the water. All right. I, as I'm making these marks down into the water, I'm thinking right, of that there's this sort of stuff that is going on. And then in my drawing, I'm, I, I'm gonna pop in the stuff that is above the surface, but I have a nod to and an understanding of that this will be something that it has it is going to I want it to make sense below the water line All right so the 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 part of the otter that is down here as I'm making my lines kind of come down into this otherwise what you you get is sometimes you'll I've seen drawings where people you know, here's here's my 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 otter, and you can get these things that sort of feeling like they're 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 sleeping on the top of the surface of the water, like it's their their bed. But these things, you want them to be down in the water. You want to have your understand that there's something below as you're putting in your lines. So this, even though you get to see only this part at the top, as you are visualizing it, just see if you can get yourself to, to think about what is the, the under otter part.
notice the real difference in the limbs. For the back limbs here, you, I'm just putting in a lump. All right. Um, sometimes you, you'll get one sort of flipper foot flopped over the other, but it's often the, the back end of the otter can be kind of very, um, if, it's, if it's hard to see and it just looks like a lump, I just draw a lump. The front feet are really super cute. Um, so these little short toes, so fingers, um, and little otter hands. On this one, you can see those front feet a little bit better. You can see that the on the the uh, and the back feet as well. But notice that you're not you're not getting these the, the, you're not seeing like big flippers like you do um, on. Are you doing that? Um, um, not you're not seeing uh, big flippers like you do on a on a sea lion. <clears throat> so if I were to draw this, I would have a let's zoom in on this a little bit more. My approach to something like this, I would think of this as a um, a big otter body with. with feet that stick out of it. Um, in the, behind that, I've got little paws that stick up. Behind that, I've got a head that sticks up. And then the part that is above the water, I've got all of this kind of otterness, but really what I'm seeing is that water line is going to tuck. There's my one foot. The water line will kind of tuck around so that I am not going to be drawing this whole under otter part here. But I want to be able to visualize that as I'm drawing my otters. Which leads us to putting faces on these critters. So we've done a lot of stuff with sort of blobbies and kind of getting these, some of these, looking at some of these forms. But one of the things that's really going to make your otter an otter and make your um, sea lion a sea lion and your harbor seal a harbor seal is how you handle the face. And so there's uh, uh, got to have a, a warning out to everybody. There is some. Um, pretty serious cuteness um, that is going to be coming your way here. So what I've done is I've drawn two circles with crosshairs through them. These are going to be sort of front views of these beasties. And I use the, the circle with the crosshairs to align the nose and the eyes of these critters. So on your own page, um, draw in your own um, circles and crosshairs. Now what you're going to do 
is we're going to put in some features on those. So for the otter on the left, the eyes are small, the nose is big. For the seal on the right, the eyes are big, the nose is small. This gives you a really different look on the faces of these critters. Um, that you can think of the otter nose as two triangles, one up, one down, with a big one being the up part. So follow along and make a sketch um, as we construct and build these. For the seal, it's going to be a small triangle pointing down. From there, we are going to put in our mouths. So the seal gets a much bigger mouth. And the otter um, just often a little shadow um, indicating where its mouth is. There's going to be big furry cheeks um, that will hide a bunch of the mouth. Um, but there's a but you'll often see a, a real distinct divot um, uh, with a, a, a bold shadow and darkness um, and a little triangle right below that nose. Now I'm gonna wrap a head around these. Now for the seal, um, what I've got, sort of the, the critical things on, on the seal, I've lightly indicated that there's some sort of a muzzle that is pointing towards us here with a little bit of a chin. Right. The seal also got a few little kind of wrinkles under its eyes. Rather subtle, just a little lower eyelid there. So the seal gets a hint of a muzzle and a hint of a chin. The otter is shaggier. So a few places on, as I'm putting in my otter head, I am putting in a few of those little tick marks that just suggest that it is, um, that suggests that it is furry. I'm going to set the eyes into the head and, and the muzzle by this little diagonal line across here, kind of gives you part of the otter face and otter cheek um, that the eye is sort of set into. And also, I've got a little bit of a prominence around and above the eye There'll be a little bit of tissue and skin that kind of comes out in a larger mound that it's not, the, the seal has its eyes sort of flat, flush with its head. You've got slightly mounded up um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the otter head. Older otters get very distinctive frosty faces. So I can put those in. And if there's a little bit of an indication of just sort of shag down this way, you kind of get that it starts to look ottery. The other thing you'll notice different between the otter and the seal um, is that the otter has these little external ears, little external ears. Um, you're not going to see that on the seal. It will be different when you get to the sea lion, but the seal doesn't have those. Um, and some people might be looking at like, well, where do the ears come in relative to the eyes and the nose? Um, and so you might be thinking to yourself like, oh, I'll just memorize this little formula, like the, from the base of the nose, the ears are above that, then the eyes above that. It's not going to be true on all otters because this is going to change if the otter is looking down or looking up more. 
The more that the otter is looking down, the higher you're going to see the ears appear on the head. And the more that the otter is looking up, the lower the ears will be and the higher the nose will be. So if the otter really is looking towards the sky a little bit more, you can have the nose much more up, the eyes lower in the head, and the ears even lower than that. So there is no formula to memorize about you know, what, you know, how high these different parts are um, on the otter face, which you're going to have to do when you're out there by the pond, uh, by, the, by the lagoon, is to, to look out and see um, you know, how is this, this otter looking towards me? This is sort of a generic kind of generally looking towards you otter. You can't count too badly with this. Um, but just be aware that as otters are looking up and down, you're going to find those ears and those features will appear to sort of change their relative positions to each other. All right, as we see here. Right. As you look around this, right, otters that have their heads tilted up higher, their ears are lower. Otters that are looking straight at you, um, you're going to see a similar pattern to uh, what you just saw back there. So what I want you to do is to pick an otter and make a lightning sketch of the otter face. And what you're gonna do is then do another one and another one and another one. We're gonna see in the next couple minutes, can you make more than five otter faces, All right? So there's gonna be otter face speed drawing. And what's gonna happen is the first few otter faces are going to be funky. There will be funky otter faces in this, right? But, um, you're going to see that at least one of them will start to capture some otterness. All right, so let's go for it right now. Then try another one. We're not trying to make perfect otter faces here. We're trying to just kind of get Then try another one.
I like that little shadow underneath the um, sort of below the cheeks. There's sort of a consistent shadow that makes sort of a triangle pointing up on these. I'm finding when I put that in, my otter faces look a little bit more ottery. So one time for one more otter face. I just did 11 otter faces. <clears throat> now, take your time and um, spend, uh, give, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes, uh, a couple minutes just drawing one otter head and just give it a, a little bit more attention, sort of slow down, block it in, and, um, and, and, and have some fun with with, with one otter face. So if you can get that sort of ottery expression. Think about how high the eyes are in the head, how close they are to the top how wide they're spaced apart from the nose. Sometimes you can put in the nose as a little placeholder and then think about, okay, from there, how far do you go out to those eyes? Oh, 